Greetings, this is Dr. Ron Minson, Clinical Director of Integrated Listening Systems. It's my pleasure to be able to speak with you today about traumatic brain injury, also commonly known as a concussion. These are on the rise, so it's an important subject for us to pay attention to. The definition of a mild traumatic brain injury or concussion, you'll hear me using these words almost interchangeably, is a blow to the head. But however, you can also get a traumatic brain injury from a whiplash. Just the head moving rapidly back and forth will move the head brain inside the skull and cause severe consequences down the road. Generally, they talk in the literature about loss of consciousness as part of the definition. I want to underscore that loss of consciousness may actually not occur, but what a person will have, they'll feel dazed, disoriented, confused, uncomfortable, maybe slightly nauseous without a loss of consciousness. And even when there is loss of consciousness, you'd be amazed at how frequently it goes undetected. So you can't really use that as a necessary regular criterion for diagnosing concussions or head injuries. So to briefly review the causes of a traumatic brain injury, blows to the head, and these can happen not only from a fall, which is not uncommon. A number of my patients have gotten out of a car, slipped on ice, fell, hit their head, and they had a traumatic brain injury. But also soccer's in header, two football players colliding into each other body to body without actually hitting their heads. These can all cause a traumatic brain injury. And that's commonly recognized as the whiplash that I was referring to, where the head simply goes back and forth. It's not as commonly recognized, and that can cause a head injury. Another very interesting factor about a cause of a head injury, you're not likely to read about this one, is having had a prior head injury. This increases your susceptibility to a subsequent head injury because of some of the symptoms that I'll be going into shortly. I mentioned that it's on the rise, and it certainly is. Up to four million people in the United States are recorded as having suffered a traumatic brain injury or concussion. I think, however, these statistics are probably low, and it may be much higher because of how frequently it goes unreported or unrecognized. An interesting factor is that these head injuries are more common in men, probably because of the nature of the sports that they get into or the risk-taking factors that we men are known to, to engage. So men are more susceptible, they're more commonly seen in men, but women are more susceptible to a head injury, particularly of the whiplash variety. Most women have a slightly longer neck than men and also less musculature, so it's easier for the head to get whipped back and forth in a rear-end car accident, for example, which is very, very common. The mechanism of a traumatic brain injury has to do with the brain either hitting the front of the skull, here's the skull that stops suddenly, the brain keeps going. So you get contusions and injury to the actual front of the brain or the brain tissue. But within that mechanism, there's something called shearing or tearing of the interneural connections between different parts of the brain. The cortex of the brain has more water content. It's more dense, it's more like jello. And when the skull stops rapidly and the brain hits the front of the skull or the back, the cortex, the gray matter, slides over the cortex and tears these delicate interneural connections. On your slide, you can see the image of an attempt to show what these tears or uh, disruptions might look like. So the axons communicating with millions of communications with one part of the brain to the other are torn. They're disrupted. Therefore, function is also engaged or disrupted as well. In addition to this, the brain swells after an injury, and this causes some unplugging of those interneural connections at the synapse, and that causes further damage, and ultimately when the cells die, they also release toxins into the brain, which create further damage. You also see in this next slide the diagram of how the tearing of the neurons can happen, or the neuron connections, not the neurons themselves. The cell bodies are fine, the connections are those that really get disrupted. Now you see the tearing of the neuronal connections uh, on the slide in front of you, and this is often even worse if, say, for example, you're in a car and you turn to look to the side when bam, you're all of a sudden hit from behind or the side. So it isn't just a to and fro motion of the neck, your neck is like this and your body and neck twists, and that further aggravates the tearing of the neurons in the 
in the in the brain and dis disrupts those neurons even further. Because of this functional disruption of the connections between different parts of the brain by the shearing of the connections, these types of injuries do not show up on a functional MRI or a CAT scan or a regular x-ray. So it's all too frequent that these tests, which are going to be negative, lead to a misdiagnosis of, quote, no head injury. But it definitely, there is a head injury there. And time will tell.